guys are amazing. First and foremost, it's snowing in New England. You guys are here. True New Englanders in New England fashion. You weren't even late. At least most of you. I was almost late. Um, I went to bed with noise-canceling headphones in. My alarm was supposed to go off at 6 o'clock. And I couldn't hear my alarm. <laughs> They do work. They do work. Had my house gotten broken into, or the rapture happened and I didn't hear it, didn't, didn't hear the last trump. Ugh. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for these men that are here, Lord. I'm glad they got here safely, Father. Um, we thank you, Lord, for um, just all that you do uh, in this ministry, Lord, and all that you do in these men's lives, Lord. I just pray that these words would, um, would, would resonate, Lord. And that you would just give me the power, Lord, to um, just teach this message and to um, bring forth your word. Can't do this without you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to be in Matthew 6 today. Matthew 6, verses 24 through 34. So I'll read the word of God first. Verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either you will hate one and love the other, or else you will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 25, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not life, is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, Yet your heavenly Father, your heavenly Father, feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Stature. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, neither they toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even, this, even Solomon, all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. A rebuke right there. O oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall I eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows what you need that you need all these things. Verse 34. We're in Matthew 6, by the way. <laughs> Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the days in its own trouble. So, this is part of the most famous sermon, and I have the privilege to give you my thoughts and expose it on these words of Jesus today. Um, this is Sermon on the Mount. Um, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and in verse 25, it says, therefore, whenever we see therefore, always ask, why is it therefore? Why is it, why is it therefore? Because he's, he's saying something. But a little further up in, in chapter, um, verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon was a god. So, do we make money our God? Do we go to work to make a living? Or do we go to work to put it in the bank? Now, bank accounts aren't bad. Money's not bad. But it says in 1 Timothy, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Money can be done for good, and money can be used for evil. But it's an earthly, it's an earthly material that he's talking about. You cannot serve God and mammon or money you can't serve both you will despise one and hate the or, or hate the other so when you when you guys work when you, i'm sure you guys all have a job here right you don't have a job mostly or you're retired but god still provides for you i make a living i'm by no means wealthy but god provides me what i need for my family provides me just enough for my needs i drive a 12-year-old car, my wife drives a 13-year-old car, 
They're all paid off. I don't got car payments. I don't care about that. My license plate's hanging off. People make fun of me for it. I'm just too lazy to put a bolt in it. <laughs> Easy as that. But the point is, it's not about what you drive. If you drive a nice car, praise God. Drive a crappy car, praise God. You get a place to go from A to B. A to B. Verse 25, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry, or do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. 12.45 on, 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 or 11.45, 12 o'clock on Sunday, what are we all thinking? What am I going to eat? Pastor Matt's still preaching. Man, I'm getting hungry. Pastor Matt, you better hurry up and finish this sermon, man. I'm getting hungry. We worry about what we're going to eat. It's a natural thing. We're going to eat. We need to eat. Some of us eat more than others, which is okay. I'm starting to lean towards the side of eating less, not as much as I used to, because I'm getting older, and I don't want to be... This um, rounds a shape. So if, if you're round, you're in shape. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> but we shouldn't worry what we're going to eat or drink. And it's going to talk more about that in, in the next couple of verses. What you will eat is important. God provides our food. He gave the, the Israelites manna from heaven. So that they were murmuring, saying, what are we going to eat, Lord? What are we going to eat, Lord? So he provided manna from heaven. Jesus is the bread of life. Without Jesus, we can't sustain. We can't sustain our lives. We can eat. We can store up treasures in heaven. I'm, I'm, we can store up treasures in, in, our, in our bank accounts, in our homes, big screen TVs and all that stuff. And that's great. If you guys have it, praise the Lord. But whatever you have, give back to the kingdom in one way or another. Give back to the kingdom whether it's opening up your home, whether it's giving to the poor, giving to the church. We should be giving back to the church naturally with the money that God has given us. Not a message on tithing either. I can care less what you guys tithe. So this is not a message on tithing. This is about God providing for us and us not to worry or to be anxious because society nowadays is so anxious we're so worried. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I got to go. go. I got oh, oh, oh. to get this done. And we're always worried about getting stuff done, which is okay. But don't let anxiety or worry take over. Let God take over. Let God handle that worry for you. Cast all your cares upon his feet, it says. Is life more than food and the body more than clothing? Jesus, perfect example. He was a peripatetic rabbi. What does that mean? He would go from place to place and teach. He said, the foxes, of the, the, the foxes have dens, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. He was essentially homeless. He slept, he would camp out wherever, he, whatever city he was in that day, he would camp out. But yet we got these nice warm houses. Now Jerusalem doesn't have a climate like this. They get a little bit of snow. But in that area, it's fairly warm. It gets cold at night, so I'm sure he bundled up, but he didn't have a place to live. He was a carpenter in, in, in his, by trade, but then when he started his earthly ministry, he went from place to place to place to place to teach. There wasn't a congregation like this standing in front of him, sitting in front of him. Actually, in those days, in synagogue, the teacher would sit and they would stand, so you guys can stand up, I'll sit down. <laughs> no, no, it, it, so... And then he says in verse 26, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. It's interesting. Look at the birds of the air. I don't know if you guys are into bird watching or not. I'm really not into bird watching. It's kind of, it's kind of boring to me, but it is beautiful. It is beautiful the way you... So I, I plant grass every year in my front yard. I like to have a nice green lush lawn. And I'll put down grass seed. Next thing you know, there's birds all over my front lawn. I sold that, and they're reaping it. What are you doing? Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. You know, I'm one of those old guys. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. I say to the kids, too, get off my lawn. But the point is, they don't have to go to the grocery store. They don't have to go and, 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 and buy groceries or make food. The Lord provides it for them. They get the worms. They get, you know, the early bird gets the worm, whatever that saying goes. So what, what I'm trying to say here is, or what Jesus is trying to say 
the birds. God takes care of the birds. How is he not going to take care of us? Our needs. Our needs, guys. Not our wants. Wants are great, but our needs is what he provides for. Lord, Lord, give me a $2 million house. Give me a $2 million house. Okay. He can do that. Lord, Lord, I need more money in my bank. I need more money in my bank account. I can't provide for my family. He can do that. He gives you what you need. Just like the birds. He gives you what you need. And they don't gather at the barns. Pastor Jim preached this recently. About, we have so much stuff in this country. We're the only country in the world that have storage units. Storage units. You have so much stuff that you can't fit it in your house, you can't fit it in your shed, so you go pay 200 bucks a month for a storage unit. We're spoiled, guys. We have too much stuff. And if you have stuff, it, it, it's, it's fine. But I hang on to stuff for so long, my wife hates it. What are you going to get rid of this stuff? What are you going to get rid of that? What, what, what's that? I could use it one day. I, it's, you guys know I'm into electronics. So I, I do a side job where I'll go in and I'll, I'll rip out old gear tell a lot of the stuff got donated to the church, like these microphones, da 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 so on and so forth. And I'll get stuff, and I'll hang on to it, because it can one day serve a purpose. Because it's, it's, it's electronics, they're expensive. These microphones, are co- they cost $4,000 each, and we have three of them. We didn't pay for them. So, like, my, like, my company donated them, because they were going to throw them away. They want to throw them away. I'm like, no, 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 I'll take that. We can use it. We can use it. God provided. We didn't have to pay for these things. These things are they look like a piece of metal and foam, and, but they're expensive. But God provided. We needed, we needed microphones, and God provided. It's just a simple illustration of what God can do. When we first built this church, we had a shoestring budget. You know, Pastor Matt loves, he's so cheap. He's sque- Cheap. <laughs> Not frugal, he's cheap. Believe me. He, he, but but he, he squeezes a quarter until the eagle screams. And he tries to make everything work and praise God for him because if not, like that wood burning stove, that thing's brilliant, brilliant idea. It keeps the guys busy. It's hard work to heat this building, but it's not, we're not paying $7,000 a month in oil to heat this place. I think the square footage is 20,000 plus square feet in this place, upstairs and downstairs. It would cost a fortune. It would cost a fortune to heat this thing. But God provided, passed him out with the idea to get this giant wood-burning furnace outside to heat this building. And sometimes it's too hot in here. Praise God. Praise God. There are churches that came and afford to put the lights on. There are some churches that came and afford to, 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 to have heat. I, went to a, I recently went to a church, and they keep the heat off. And their, their pipes froze. So I'm like, guys, keep the heat on to keep the pipes from not freezing. It might cost a little bit more money, but now you're going to pay $30,000 in damage because you have burst pipes. Going on a tangent here. I saw, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Your heavenly Father. doesn't say their heavenly Father in verse 26. Your heavenly Father. So again, he's speaking to his disciples. Your heavenly Father. Our heavenly Father. Feeds them. Are you not more value than they? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. We are more valuable. Not valuable. There, are, there is more value in us to our, our Heavenly Father than the birds. But He provides for them too. He provides for them too. Verse 27. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Okay, so anybody know what a cubit is? Bingo. It's about 18 inches. Jesus isn't saying here, I wish I could add 18 inches to my life, I to, to, my, to my height, maybe some short basketball players like Spud Webb, I'm aging myself, but Spud, Spud Webb is 5'8", a guy could dunk like nobody's business. But it's, talking about, it's not talking about your height, it's talking about your lifespan. Worrying is not going to add to your life, guys. It's been proven that worrying actually decreases it. Worrying decreases it. And I know we all worry, guys. We're men. We want to provide for our families. We want to provide for ourselves. We want to, we want to do things for other people. We want, we want to make sure that we are providers, 
That's what we're called to be. That was what Adam was. He was the provider. He was to till the ground. And through the generations, that's what men are called to do. We're called to provide. But don't worry, guys. I'm a warrior. I'm going to be honest. I'm a warrior. Am I going to get this done? Am I going to get that done? Is my wife going to be mad at me today? Is my kids going to be, my kids going to listen to me? There's so much that goes on in my mind that it's like by 11 o'clock at night, my mind just wants to explode. And I bring it to God, and God's like, it's, it's okay. Be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46.10 says. Be still and know that I am God. We can't be God. We're not God. We try to be. We try to do everything outside of his will to get things done, to get things done, to get things, all, all these things. But yet, be still and know that he is God. He will provide. The past year or more, I've had two jobs. Not because I'm bad at my job. We live in a rough economy right now. Inflation's at an all-time high. I'm not going to get political. But what I am going to say is, I had a job for six years. Went through the ranks, became a manager, and new management comes in. They let me go. They let me go. So I'm without a job for three, five months, I think. I was nervous. I was worrying. I was on unemployment. I had a little bit of money in the bank. So I took my family, hopped in the car, went to Tennessee to visit family. Why did I do that? Because I trusted God. I trusted. I spent probably two grand on that trip, you know, between fuel and lodging. We took, we drove, we took our car, we took it, you know, broke it up into a couple days. But I wanted to take my mind off of it. But the whole time, I'm checking my email. Did I get a, you know, did the recruiter reach out to me? I'm worrying. I'm worrying. But I'm, but I'm, I'm worrying silently. But God knows. God knows our hearts. So I gave it over to God. The next thing you know, the phone's ringing off the hook. Interview after interview after interview after interview. And this one job comes up from an old boss of mine. He's like, hey, there's a job up in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Executive support pays really well. I'll hook you up with him. I know the CIO, Chief Information Officer, who's, who's the, the head of the organization. I'll hook you up with him. Hooks me up with him. I get the job. Praise the Lord. So unemployment gone. I was able to put the money back in the bank that I had. Eight months later, they, had, they, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were a public company. They went private. They got purchased by a um, private equity firm. Eight months later, I get, I get, I get laid off. But it was perfect timing. It was perfect timing. This is right around the time the school was getting started, and a bunch of stuff had to get done for the school. So I applied for unemployment. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for a job loosely because I knew a lot of stuff had to get done to, for the school to get up and running. All, all the IT stuff, all, all the TVs and this and that and the other thing had to get done. God provided a way for me to help, and Anthony's witnessed this. I'm here all the time. Even though I have a job now, I'm here all the time. God made a way for me to be here with these kids pouring into these kids every day. And it's amazing. It's truly amazing. So then a couple months goes by. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And it's like September. And now I'm starting to get worried. The money's starting to run out a little bit. Unemployment's just barely getting us by. And I mean barely. We were able to pay the mortgage. But we couldn't, we couldn't go out to eat. We couldn't do any, any things. I couldn't take my wife on a date. Not that we go on dates often, but I couldn't take her out for a date. So we had to cut back a lot. No more Amazon. No more getting, you know, 25 packages a week. That had to stop. You know, me and my wife, we're crazy on Amazon. Oh, yep, I'll buy that. I need, I need, I need uh, coasters. Yeah, that looks nice. It'll match my decor. I got 25 coasters in my house. What do I need coasters for? Like, it blows my mind that the, the, how we waste our money. Fast forward a little bit further, I finally get a job. It's October. Well, actually... It wasn't October, it was in September that this whole process started. They offered me the job, and they go, hey, a couple weeks later, random question. I get a text from the, from the, from the recruiter, and, and I'll, I'll tie this in in a second. He goes, by the way, are you vaccinated? I waited before I responded. Now, this isn't about vaccines or whether you're vaccinated or not. It's your own conviction. But I said, do I have to be? He goes, yes. To go into the office, you need to be vaccinated. I didn't say another word. He goes, I get the gist. Let me pull some strings. 
So I, what I do is executive support. So I, I support all the executives, the C-level C -level executives for, for all their IT needs. It went all the way up to the CEO of the company, the guy who I was going to be supporting the most, and they changed the rules. God opened that door. God opened that door through prayer and supplication. I was worried. I'm not going to lie. I was worried. Like, I got to go back to the drawing board. I got to, you know, I turned down two other jobs to get this job. Now, will these guys take me back? God opened that door. Stay vigilant in prayer, guys. If there's something that is, 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 is just, just keeping you down, sickness, health, prodigal children, keep praying. God will open a door. God will provide a way. He always does. All right, let's continue. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Lilies, they're beautiful flowers. God made these flowers. And the fact that they, so we have, we have mixtures of, of different flowers to make new flowers and stuff like that. You know, taking seeds and putting them together and morphing seeds together, whatever they do. But God created these lilies. And as I was studying... Uh, through Pastor Joe Foch, he told a story where they, they were driving through, through Jerusalem and there was this open field, an open field, and it was filled with lilies. Beautiful. They stopped the bus so they could take pictures. That's how beautiful it was. God didn't, or, or man didn't plant those. They were natural. They, 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 were, they, were, they were there. They were there. They were planted by God. They were created by God. Consider now he's saying, consider, ponder on that. Think about that for a second. The lilies of the field, how they grow. There's a natural process. Bees pollinate them and this, that, and the other thing, the whole science behind it. Our creator did that. Our creator did that. They neither toil nor spin, verse 29 It says, and yet I say to you that even Solomon, King Solomon, King David's son, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon was known for his riches. He's one of the richest men in the world. And he was famous worldwide. And as I was studying, I learned that they would take gold. Now, he had a chariot and he had 32 men. So 16 on each side. I think that's the math. They would take gold, grind it up, and sprinkle it. They had to have black raven hair, it said. And they would sprinkle it on their heads so that they would glisten as they're jogging behind the chariot, or next to the chariot. Solomon loved his riches. He loved his glory. But he asked God for wisdom, not riches. He asked the question, do you want riches or do you want, do you want, do you want wisdom? What do you want? And he said, I want wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is sweet. Wisdom is beautiful. Book smarts is great, but wisdom is greater. You can read all you want and not gain any wisdom. No wisdom at all. You can gain book knowledge, but wisdom is something that you have to pray for. When you pray for wisdom, God's not going to go, oh, you got wisdom. Jack, you got wisdom. You got wisdom. It's not like Oprah giving away a free car. You got a car. You got a car. You got wisdom. You got wisdom. You got wisdom. He gives you instances or, or, or gives you ways to use wisdom. Yesterday, not going to get into all the details, somebody stopped me and talked to me and asked me about something. And I kind of lost my temper a little bit. I wasn't wise. I wasn't wise. I hollered. I screamed. Got back to Pastor Matt. Pastor Matt didn't rebuke me. He gave me grace. He could have rebuked me harshly. Because as a leader in this church, you have to be a certain standard. You have to live by. As we all should. As we all should. We should all live by a holy standard. And I didn't. I failed. I failed I didn't use my wisdom. I, I pray for wisdom all the time, and I didn't use it. 
in moments like that, that's when you use wisdom. So Solomon was a man full of wisdom, even though he was the richest man in all the world. And he was arrayed in all his glory. He loved bling bling. To put it in today's vernacular, he loved the bling bling, the gold chariots, and, and the, the way that he built the temple with all the gold. And, 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 you know, it was for God's glory. Don't get me wrong. But these lilies are arrayed. His glory was not arrayed like one of these. Beautiful lilies. And yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God clothes the grass, now we're talking about grass here, which today, which is today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven for fuel, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith! Five times in the Gospels, he says that to his disciples. O oh, you of little faith. It's a rebuke. He's rebuking his knucklehead disciples. He picked these fishermen and tax collectors and, and Judas and these 12 guys that are following him around, asking him all kinds of questions. Peter, Peter always had his foot in mouth disease. Always put his foot in his mouth. O oh, you of little faith. Five times in the gospel, it says, O oh, you of little faith. Where is your faith today? Can I say, oh, you of little faith? Or, oh, you of great faith? It says, the grain of a mustard seed. If you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed. You can say to this mountain, be cast into the, into the ocean. This church, there's a giant rock here, a mountain. If you look out back, that's how high it was. That's how high it was. We didn't know that when we bought this land, how much ledge and rock was going to be here. But by the power of God, that was cast into the sea. Somehow, some way, Pastor Matt found a way to get it done for cheap. Done on the dime. But here we sit, five and a half years later, five years later, through prayer, asking the Lord for his provision. Now, this building should have cost two to three million dollars to build. I think we built it for less than a million because we used the men in the church. Sound systems. I helped, I helped put the sound system in. Sound systems of this, of this caliber cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to install, to tune. Now, there's still issues. There's still feedback. There's still this. You know, I'm, I'm not a sound person by trade, but I know a lot about it. I've been doing it for years. But we designed it on a budget, on a super, super low budget. And praise the Lord, someone, someone gave the money to pay for the speakers. Through prayer, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. If your car doesn't start in the morning, don't worry. If you have no clean clothes, don't worry. God will provide a way. God always does. I've been, I've been close to homelessness before. I know I'm, I'm kind of kind of going going a little bit long here. I've been close to homeless, sleeping in my car. I wasn't a Christian at the time, made some bad decisions, but I'm sleeping in my car. Like four or five days goes by, I wasn't talking to my family. My brother calls me, "Hey, what's going on? Where are you?" So I'm in my car. He's like, where you been? Oh, here and there, you know, you know, blah blah blah. He's like, "Are you sleeping in your car?" Yeah. He goes, get to my house right now. I'll make a room for you. And I wasn't even a Christian then. But that's God's sovereignty, guys. God can make a way. No matter what circumstance you're in, he's going to make a way. All right, let's, let's try to finish this up quickly. So to, we're talking about, oh, you of little faith. He rebuked his, his disciples. Verse 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Therefore, or again, why is that therefore? Do not worry. Do not be anxious. Philippians 4.8, it talks about being anxious. Be anxious for nothing, but by all things through prayer and supplication. Supplication is a specific prayer. Pray for specific things. And if it's within God's will and God's timing, he will give it to you. Verse 32, for after all these things, the Gentiles sink, seek. Non-believers seek all these things. They seek to have the, the coolest car, the coolest 
clothes, the coolest watches, the bling bling, all that stuff. Now, if you have that stuff, I'm not condemning you. There's no condemnation in Christ. But what are you doing with the, the, the rest? Are you giving it to the poor? Are you giving it to the church? Are you giving it to your local church? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things shall be added to you. Right here, guys. Right here. That's important. Seek the kingdom first. The kingdom. What is that? What is the kingdom? It's heaven. It's, it's one and the same. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, this is your salvation, guys. This is our salvation. And he is urging you in this verse to salvation. Come to me, all who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. He will give you rest. Don't be burdened by your worries, guys. Let's finish up. I just went to Matthew 8. That's a little bit too far. I could be here all day. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Today has its own troubles. So let's not worry about today. Let's not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow is its own trouble. Let's focus on what we're doing today, what we have to get done today, and let's do it all for God's glory. In Romans 8.32, it says, let me just flip over there really quick. Romans 8.32, it says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things. Guys, if we ask, and it's in his will, Pastor Dan was telling a story the other night about a woman that was um, on a, she, she was praying for healing. And he said, Lord, if it's your will, heal her. If it's not your will, Lord, we pray she gets better. And the woman kind of rebuked him. <laughs> like, Why are you praying like that? I've never heard anybody pray like that before. It's about his will, guys. The point is it's about his will. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today. Don't worry about today, but focus on Jesus. When you, when you, think, when you think, how am I going to get this done today, Lord? I got so much to do. I got I to I take care of my family. I got to take care of my kids. I got to go home and shovel my driveway. You know, praise the Lord, you guys are here. I'm so thankful that you guys are here today to hear this nitwit give you guys the word of God. But don't worry, guys. God will make a way. My snowblower doesn't work properly. God will make a way. My, my neighbor, hey, Rick, here's, here, here's my snowblower. I can shovel it, but I'd rather use a snowblower. Not going to lie. <laughs> I'd rather use a snowblower. Not going to lie. But see, you know, oh Lord, I know, I know my, I'm too lazy to fix it. I'm too cheap to get it fixed. My neighbor, love thy neighbor as yourself. That's a prime example. I love that guy. Not because he does things for me, but because he's my neighbor. So guys, in closing, the kingdom of God is, is, is amazing. And we are serving a wonderful God. And he provides a way for us to not worry. Cast all your cares upon him. Don't worry, guys. It's okay to get, you know, I got to get X, Y, and Z done. You know, you know, I'm a list maker. I make a list, check it off. Make sure it's done. Maybe because I got a little bit of ADHD, I got to make a list because I forget things. You know, check, 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 check. All right, I'll get this stuff tomorrow or another day because I don't worry about it. I didn't get it done today. There wasn't enough time in the day. I got a bunch of work I got to do today. Will I get it done? I pray I do. Pray for me that I get it done. So, in closing again, Lord, guys, we, just, we, just, we, get, we, get, we get to remember that God will always make a way. He'll always provide for us. He provides for the birds. They don't, they don't go to the grocery store. You know, I'll admit it, I was on welfare for three months. Never in my adult life have I been on welfare. But I got a wife and two kids to provide. That's what it's there for. And I don't believe in socialism, but it's Department of Transitional Assistance. Transitional. It provided for me when I needed it. 
Now, it's embarrassing to say as a grown man that I was on welfare. If it wasn't for my kids, I wouldn't have done it. But I had to make sure my kids were fed. God made a way. Typically, they don't give a lot of money. They gave us $1,000 a month for food. I was like, praise the Lord. Like, that's one less thing I have to worry about. My kids are going to be fed. Me, I can, go, I can skip a couple meals. But I think it's three days without water, you're dead. Seven days without food, you're dead. I'm not saying that to worry you guys, but God provides those things. There's water to drink. There's food to eat. I'm sure you guys had coffee this morning before you came here. So God, God provides. Amen? All right, I know I went a little bit over. I'm sorry. Uh, so, Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. Um, thank you for this message, Lord. I pray that it resonated in someone's heart uh, today, Lord. And we, uh, we thank you. And uh, get everybody home safe, Lord. Amen. Amen.